if you're in a diet, you're in a diet for something. Oh, look at the Twinkie. <laughs> hey, what are you talking about, Joe? Is this just like a workout sermon today? Nah, just hang with me. Are we living a diet to destruction, a spiritual diet to destruction, or are we living a lifestyle that's going to keep us like this all the time? Amen. Amen. Yes. I'm preaching this message today. If you can't tell, you'll know what it means, what all this stuff here is for. I titled it Diet to Destruction. Diet to Destruction. And I'm going to start by saying this. In America, each year, $20 billion is allocated for diets every year. 20 billion, there's all kinds of diets. There's the, there's the, the South Beach diet, there's the carbohydrate-free diet, there's the drink water diet, there's the eat chicken after eight o'clock diet, there's the you know, liquid only diet, it's slay on your back with your feet up in the air diet. I mean, there's a million diets, $20 billion worth of diets every single year. It's just ridiculous. Diets are for moments. That's all they're for. A diet is for a moment. And if you want it to last, it's going to have to become a lifestyle. Other than that, it is just a diet. And the diets are meant to fail. What you have to realize is if you're in a diet, you're in a diet for something. What for? What, what, what am I dieting for? All right, the prom's coming up. Or I'm going to get married. Or I'm, my high school reunion's coming up. Or the beach or the summer. Whatever it is. And you get, you get ready for it, man. And you just, you just do your very best and you diet. And there's so, so many kinds of food that is out there. You become like a yo-yo. You're up, you're down. You're up, you're down. You see, there's, there's two kinds of foods that you can have. There's, there's the food that God gave us, and then there's the processed food that the world gave us right here. And the food that God gave us, you say, what are you talking about, Joe? Is this just like a workout sermon today? Nah, just hang with me. <laughs> the, the food that God gave us is what he meant for us to live on. The food the world made is what he, it meant for us to just have more destruction. Do you realize, do you realize that almost 97 plus percent of all sickness and disease that is in the United States of America is caused by three things. Sugar, processed food, and stress. Three things cause sickness. Sugar, processed food, and stress. Refined sugar, processed food, and stress. And if you eat enough sugar, you're going to get stressed. So let's just blame it all on sugar. I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm going to tell you this story. Let me, let, me just, let me talk about diets for a minute because we're going to work into something. Let me talk about a diet. You see, when I was young, in like 19 years old, like, you know, five years ago, when I was 19, I, used to, I had an appetite. I used to work out. I used to train so hard, but I ate all the time. My mom would fix me dinner, and just my portion of the dinner, just my portion of the dinner was two whole chickens, four hamburger patties, vegetables, and salad. That was just my portion right there. That's what I ate, and I ate like nobody's business. I ate all the time. I ate like everything, and our table at our house looked like this. I mean, it's always food from one end to the other. If four people showed up or 10 people, there was enough food for everybody. So then, you know, I, and then I had this. So I I ate good. I ate a lot of food. But then I had on top of that, I was a chocoholic. I could eat more sweet than 10 people could eat. And my mom would go buy this stuff, and it was called Heavenly Hash. And they, the candy store down the street used to make it. And it was thick, dark chocolate or milk chocolate with layers of chocolate and marshmallow and chocolate and marshmallow and nuts. And I loved it. Now, I'm 19 years old. And for Easter, my mom used to put a spread out on the table. I promise you guys, if my mom was still alive today, me, my brother, and my sister would all have Easter baskets on Christmas, Easter. What is it? Holiday? Easter? <laughs> We'd all have Easter bags. She used to buy more candy. All the stores went down because she bought all the candy. So she bought one pound of heavenly hash, chocolate, like this. And she put it in the center of the table. When we woke up, we saw all this, this, this candy and the, you know, the, the foiled eggs. and the, It was all right there. And I'm just, I, I sat down at the sofa. I didn't even eat breakfast. I sat down at the sofa, and I started eating. Within an hour, I ate the whole pound. Whole pound of chocolate. When my mom came in the room, I had eaten all the heavenly hash, and I had all kinds of the foiled wraps all over the place because I was eating the chocolate eggs now. And she says, Joey, where's the, where's the heavenly hash? I'm like, in my belly. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, you didn't save any for your dad or your brother. <laughs> Lost out. 
She goes, right, I bought another pound. Don't worry about it. Because she always had like, always store. It was never run out. She had like a, a silo in the backyard of everything you could need. So she brought out the other one. She goes, I'll leave this for your brothers. I said, okay. But that was, that was how I ate. So now I have a problem with chocolate. I eat good food. I had non-processed food. My mom made the good stuff. But now I got a problem with sweets, ice cream, brownies, you name it. So I'm older now. You hit 30, you got to watch what you eat. You got to, because everything kind of starts to shift. You know what I'm saying? So I'm working out hard and I'm, and I'm, and I'm all of a sudden I'm like, I got to do something because my friend, my doctor friend, he's a world renowned doctor. And he told me all about how the sugar kills you. All the disease that comes through his office, all based on the amounts of sugar, processed foods, all that stuff, refined sugar. So I said, mm, I got to do something about that. So I'm not going to eat sugar till four o'clock on Friday. I'm going to eat it from four on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday till midnight. On Monday through Friday at four o'clock, no sweets. I'm not going to touch candy. And I did that for like three years. Let me tell you what happened at four o'clock on Friday. I would go to the store and stock up, and I would stock my closet with all the stuff that I like. I had brownie mixes. I, I was having a party by myself. I had ice cream in the refrigerator. I had all kinds of different chocolate bars that I liked, everything. Don't, don't you touch my closet. Don't go near it. If it's 345, that's it. My wife would be like, oh, God, here we go. Every Friday at 345, I'd sit there, and I'd just wait in the kitchen like this. And if I was out, I had a stash. Oh, I was bad. If I was out, I had a stash. I put the stash in my car, and when, when 4 o'clock came, it was like a little kid. <laughs> and I was just eating like all this stuff. I could put this whole table away, no problem. And that went on for a long time until midnight on Sunday. At 11.45, I was bloated. <laughs> and I was stuffed. And you know how sugar makes you feel? Ugh. And by 4, I'd be like this. I'd be lethargic because the sugar kills you. And I'd be like, oh, Lord have mercy. But it was 11.45, 15 minutes. <laughs> 15 more minutes. Keep going. Give me another brownie. I'm not kidding. Give me another. My wife's like, Joe, what are you doing? And I'd be like, I got to have this. This I love. So then I found out how bad refined sugar was. And I said, you know what? No longer can it be a diet. No longer. Now it's got to become a lifestyle. So I said, no more refined sugar. No more soda, no more this. I have to incorporate a different kind of a lifestyle because what you do is you diet for what you want and then you turn around and go 100 miles an hour in the other direction. And you become the yo-yo. Up, you're down. You're up, you're down. And what ends up happening to your life is you sideswipe all your organs because you can't digest processed sugar. It sideswipes it. The pancreas explodes with the... With, uh, the um, insulin and the heart gets attacked and it's, it's, it's heart disease and, and diabetes and cancer and it's all related to sugar. And you have to ask yourself, I had to change my lifestyle. I could no longer eat like I did when I was 19. I could no longer binge on this table right here. My life had to become this table right here. And yes, I'm not a vegetarian. I eat, I eat red meat like, I don't know, once every two months and chicken and fish and stuff. But you got to eat this kind of stuff. You see, and is, is our relationship with God like a diet to destruction? Or is it a lifestyle that's going to keep us spiritually healthy and filled with God's love? What, what kind of a life do we have? You see, we have to ask ourselves these questions because what ends up happening is we use Jesus. We use him. We use them for what we want. And then, we, then we, we, we throw ourselves to the world. We throw ourselves to the gluttony. At, we hit 4 o'clock on Friday. We do whatever we, whatever we need Jesus for. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to come to church. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And as soon as we get what we want, bam, we're gone, man. We're back into the world. It's 4 o'clock. And we hit 4 o'clock, man. From 4 o'clock to 11.40, we're just in the world partying like nobody's, like nobody's business. And then at midnight, we're hurting again. We're hurting. So what do we do? We're back on our knees. And then when we don't need Jesus anymore, we're back into the world again. You have to ask yourself this question. What life are we living? What kind of a life are you and I living? Are we living a diet to destruction, a spiritual diet to destruction, or are we living a lifestyle that's going to keep us like this all the time? Because God can grow you when you're moving like this, but he can't grow you when you're a yo-yo. When you're up and you're down, and you're up and you're down. Let's, try, let's, let's go to the Bible. Let's, let's go to the scriptures. Acts chapter 8, verse 14 through 24. Let me show you how this works. Let me show you how our appetite for destruction, our diet to destruction, is even in the old, in the, in the old days, back in the New Testament. Shannon, why don't you read that for us? Chapter 8, verse 14 through 24. 
When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers there that they might receive the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Whoa, 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 what did he say? This is a guy named Simon, not Simon Peter. He, they, were, they were laying hands on people and the people were getting filled with the Holy Spirit. So this guy wanted to buy Jesus, wanted to buy the Holy Spirit. Read it again, the buying part. He offered them money and said, Give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. He wanted to use God. He wanted to use God to increase his image and his position in society. He was a diet type Christian. He just needed God for the prom. He just needed God for the beach. He wanted to look good for the beach. He wanted to look good for his social status. And there's nothing, keep reading what he said after that. Peter answered, may your money perish with you because you thought that you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. Hold on. He's saying to him, your heart is all wrong. You just want to use God. You can't get a blessing from God just because you want to use him. And he said, go repent. Go repent. You're, 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 you want to just use this and abuse this for your own personal gain. But I love, what, I love what Simon said next. What did he say here, Shannon? For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Simon answered, pray to the Lord for me so that nothing you have said may happen to me. Whoa, he, he wasn't even aware he did anything wrong. He, he wasn't aware that he did anything. Peter was telling him, your heart is all wrong. You're a dieter. You want to diet. You need, this has to become a lifestyle for you. You can't, just, you can't just take Jesus off the shelf when you want him. It's got to be a lifestyle for you. You're, you're eating all this, and you don't see anything wrong with it. Because look at how it's packaged, folks. Look at how pretty it is. Look at all the nice colors. Well, you got the same colors over here. But if you get this taste in your mouth, you don't want this. But when you get this taste in your mouth, you no longer want this. Amen. Amen. I was at the grocery store buying this the other day. I felt so guilty with this in my, in my cart. I had to explain to the lady what I was doing. I, I promise you, I told her, I said, I'm not eating any of this. I'm taking it back. She goes, you're going to take it back? I said, either that or throw it away, but I'm not giving it to anybody. Because that's, I can't even, I don't even want my friends to eat this stuff. It's just no way. Forgive me. But dear, dear God, it's so beautiful. Look how pretty it is. Oh, oh, look at the, oh, look at the Twinkie. <laughs> And what do we got here? A lemon and a cucumber and some strawberries and some grapes. Mm. <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? Okay, so Peter, Peter was speaking to Simon how wrong he was, but, but Simon didn't know he did anything wrong. So he said, Peter said, you need to repent. You need to, get, you need to make Jesus a lifestyle, not a diet. And he said, okay. I'm gonna, he goes, pray with me that what you just said won't happen because I don't want it. Now watch what happens here. Watch this. John chapter 14, verse 25 through 27. Read this, Shannon. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Whoa, that's the Holy Spirit. What Jesus was saying is, I am sending the one to teach you what you don't know. I'm going to send you the, the person that's going to explain to you how this hurts you and how this blesses you. I'm going to give you the appetite for glory, not the diet to destruction. And he said, but, but you got to, there was one part that you had, you had read there, Shannon. He, he had said, um, read, the, read right in the middle there somewhere. Just grab a spot, start reading, I don't care. But the, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Right I there. Right there. Do you hear what he said? He said, 
My peace I'm going to give with you. There's no, what, what is peace? What is, what is the opposite of peace? Stress, destruction, anxiety, oppression, depression. That's the opposite of peace. What's the opposite of sadness? Joy. He gives you joy and he gives you peace. Well, it's here. It's up here is where he gives it. It's in your passion of your heart. And he wants to keep you healthy from here to here. So he said, the Holy Spirit will give you this peace and will give you this joy because he's going to teach you the ways of the word. He's not gonna, he's, you're going to forget more than you remember. So he's going to teach you on a regular basis. He's going to show you how you can live a healthy life not eating this and a healthy life eating this. Eat a healthy life. You want a healthy life? You eat on this table. You want a non-healthy life? You want to pay to the doctors? You want to, you want to, you want to just, just go ahead. Fork it out just like this. Just go like, take a portion of your money, just throw it away and dine at this table right here. Do you know, this is a dollar something. This was $3.99 to buy three of these where you could buy a whole box of this for $1.99. You see the difference? They make it cheap because they want to preserve it. There's fillers in it. Just like the enemy wants you to do with your Christian walk. He wants you to, he wants you to have a walk that's got fillers in it. He wants you to have a walk that's, been, that's been got preservatives in it and a walk that has, you know, it's processed. It's not fully God. It's not pure. That's what the enemy wants. But he says the Holy Spirit is going to teach you. How in the world is the Holy Spirit going to teach you if you're on a diet-type spiritual walk? You're only using God when you need him. So the Holy Spirit is speaking all the time, but you can only hear him when you're up. Now you leave him, he's still talking. You're missing all this right here. And then you meet him over here somewhere. And then you're up and then you're down. And then you're up and then you're down. Diets are nothing more than a place for destruction. Now, does it work for some people? Maybe 1%. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a $20 billion a year business. You'd say, look at all you got to do is eat the right food, exercise, and, and, and your whole life changes. I was talking to somebody this morning. He said, I've gotten on this diet. No sweets, no nothing, no breads, and I just feel great. Well, of course you feel great because this is sideswiping your heart. You, this doesn't go into your digestive system. This doesn't go. It just crashes the pancreas. It crashes the heart. This is the nutrients to who you are and what you're made of. The world crashes your heart. The world is just nothing more to shock you and destroy you when God and his walk and everything along with it is to lift you up and to take you to the place you can't get to on your own on a regular basis. Mm, to God be the glory. Amen. God bless it. Did you finish all that? Okay, good. Let's go to the next one. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 through 15. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Hold that thought. How are we supposed to know? How are we supposed to know that this is not the appetite for success? How are we supposed to know unless somebody tell us? How are we supposed to know our spiritual Dieting is going to destroy us, and it's supposed to become a way of life. Keep reading, Shannon. And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Wow. That's me. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm bringing you the good news. How can you know if I don't tell you? How can other people know if you don't go tell them? I'm bringing you the good news. You go bring the good news. People understand what I'm saying? You got to spread it. You got to, your, your walk cannot be just for you. You can't take all your good food and hide it in the closet. You got to share it with others. And you got to walk away from this stuff. Well, how long, what, can I cheat once in a while? Well, that's what, it's made to kill you. It's a drug. You get that taste in your mouth, all you need. Listen, if you gave me, if you gave me a Snickers bar right now, I probably would uh, like this. But give me two of them and I won't want that anymore. Because the taste gets in your mouth. You see, what you got to understand is you got to bring the good news to the people. It can't just be from the pulpit. It's got to be your life has got to bring his news. And the only way to bring the good news to the people is to have a lifestyle of spirituality and not just a diet, which is going to cause you to run 100 miles in the other direction as soon as you get what you want. Blessed is the one who eats the food, who prepares the good food. Let me say that again. Blessed is the one who eats the good food. But greater is the one who prepares the good food because now they can eat it anytime they want. Amen. So you see what I'm saying? You can, you can, in other words, it's like you can go to the store and you can buy this or you can grow it in your garden and you can have it anytime you want. But you have to understand that it's not 
a seasonal relationship. If you make God a seasonal relationship, you'll be destroyed by that relationship. If you make God a diet, you're only going to use him until you need him. Jesus should be the lifestyle, not the destruction. Jesus should be the lifestyle, not the diet. Here's your diet. Let me give you some diet food right here. Can I do that for you? Can you go to James chapter 4, verse 8? Watch what he says to me. Don't walk away. Don't take me just on, on, a, on a seasonal basis. This is what I need you to do. Go ahead, read it. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Come near to God. You draw to him, he draws to you. You draw to him, he draws to you. Wash your hands of this and draw near to this right here. Because when you draw near to God, he draws near to you. And it becomes a relationship, not a diet. Look, give me Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. Watch this. So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Continue. Continue. It's not a diet. It's, not, it's a continual life. It's a lifestyle. Amen? You say, well, Joe, you don't, you're not showing me how to do this. No, no one can show you how to do this. No one can show you how to live a lifestyle with Christ. You have to just do it together. You have to begin. You have to, you have to reject. What did you say? Wash your hands and put it behind you. The first scripture you said, wash your hands and put that behind you. I cannot give this up, but I made a vow to God never to eat refined sugar again. Never. Because I know if I make a vow, I'll keep it. But in the same way, Lord, help me in my walk with you. Help me, God. He'll help you. That's what he wants to do. He loves you. That's what the Holy Spirit's job is, is to teach you and to keep drawing you. But he can't teach you if this is where you're supposed to be and your back is towards him and you're eating over here. Because he's a gentleman. He waits for you to turn. Just glance in his direction and put your hand out and he'll draw you away from that stuff. But you got to do it on a regular basis, not just a diet when you need him. Give me um, Joshua 1.8. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Woo, people want to know, how am I supposed to be prosperous? How am I supposed to be successful? Meditate on the word, not the diet to destruction, but on the glory of God, the word of God. Meditate on it day and night. Well, Joe, it's hard to do. It's only hard to do if you're not walking equally yoked with those people that are doing the same thing. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. But give me Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, if you would, please. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. My, my God, the word, the, it's what it prolong. it prolongs your life. It gives you peace. But it says, what was the very first sentence you read? Verse 1. My son, do not forget my teaching. Don't forget it. Don't walk away from me because you lost 14 or 15 pounds, and now you feel comfortable in your bathing suit. Don't leave me now because I've blessed you. Walk with me. Don't forget my commands because I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you peace. I'm going to extend your life. I'm going to give you the prosperity. I am your appetite for success, not a diet. Me, I am your appetite for success. Turn from this, wash your hands, and be upon and about my Father's business, which is the blessings that Jesus came and gives you. Wow, God is so good. To him be the glory. Man, to God be the glory. Mm. One more scripture. One more scripture. Romans 12, 2. Read that for me. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Get away from the pattern of this world. Get away from the pattern and transform your mind and get your mindset away from a spiritual diet and move it into a spiritual lifetime. How do we do that? It's who you walk with. Who you walk with. You can't, guys, if you're, Zephyr, come on up here for a second, if you would, please. It's who you walk with. I'm going to show you what your, what your wrong friends do to you. Well, especially when you're in a relationship. Listen, guys, loneliness is a tough thing. I understand that. Loneliness is tough. And when you're lonely, you make bad decisions. Come on over here, Zeph. Good to see you, buddy. You having a good day? All right, praise the Lord. All right, you look good today. Anyway, so 
Loneliness makes you, causes you to make bad decisions. And you start hanging out with people. And I can't tell you how many people come to me and go, you know, I can, I can handle this. I, I just go with my friends after work. We can't go out hang out at the bar. But you are an alcoholic. Don't go near that place. I can handle it, Joe. You can't. It's an appetite to destruction. Because you're hanging with unequally yoked people. And unequally yoked people are godly on the outside, but not on the inside. And they'll do anything. Maybe they need you, but they're not going to, they need you as a friend. But they don't want to, they don't want to conform to your ways because they don't know how, they don't know how to wash their hands from it. They don't know how to hit their knees and say, Jesus, help me follow you. Jesus, help me with my unbelief. Holy Spirit, teach me that which I don't know. Amen. They don't know that, so they just fall deeper and deeper into the destruction. <laughs> and this is what they are. They're like this, and it's like working out. You got to work out. So I'm going to be Zephyr's workout partner, but I'm unequally yoked, you see? And I'm sitting here, and we're going to do squats. You know how to do squats? Of course you do. You're an Olympic lifter. All right, show them what a squat is. Watch this. That's a squat right there. And I'm your friend. I'm going to encourage you. This is an unequally yoked friend. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Come on. Come on. Give me 10 more. Five, six, seven. Okay, take a breath. Take a breath. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Come on. Come on. Give me 10 more. There you go. Good. Come on. Give me another one. There you go, pal. Come on. Keep eating. Keep eating. Come on. Eat, 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 eat. While you're encouraging him, if you are unequally yoked, you are destroying them. Watch who you walk with. Let me ask you this question. Do you... How am I supposed to be serious? You like it, don't you? Of course you do. No, you don't. Really? Let me ask you this. Look at the people on the broadcast. Look at the slop I got here. Let me ask you this question. Do you want to continue with a spiritual diet in your life? Or do you want to move to a lifestyle with God? Because the lifestyle will give you peace. The lifestyle will give you joy. The lifestyle will prolong your life. The lifestyle will give you prosperity. The lifestyle will give you everything that the world cannot give you. But if you want to do that, you better watch who you walk with. Because if you're unequally yoked, they're going to slip a Twinkie in the midst of your prayer meeting. And I don't know what to do after that. Did that bless somebody today? Come on, Jesus. That's all I got. We don't want you to leave today without giving you an opportunity to follow Jesus. The Bible says the only way to the Father is through the Son. Ask God to forgive you of your sins and also ask Him to help guide you on this journey. It's an amazing journey that will help you on this earth and in eternity. Make sure that you go to a church that talks about God's Word, and don't forget to read the instruction manual. That's the Bible. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at orlandofamilychurch.com or at 407-462-1358. Feel free also to stop by every Sunday at 1.30 p.m. We love you and hope to see you soon. God bless.